What's up guys? Welcome back to Daytona and welcome back to Project Cars 2 for some more Rolex 24 hype. Today we are going way, way back to 1971 where this Penske Sunoco Ferrari 512M raced and really probably should have won the race in the hands of Mark Donahue and David Hobbs, but unfortunately the car had an incident during the race and ended up looking like a duct tape mess. I think they still finished third overall despite all the damage, but today we're going to try to rectify that situation in a 25 minute race twice around the clock. I made sure of it this time uh, that the time jump will be appropriate uh, in this race and we're going to try to race to the front in this Ferrari 512 against of course the regular field of Porsche 917s as well as some of the older Ferrari 512s and the modern ones or at least modern uh, in relation to my car. You may also notice that there are some GT runners out there. It wouldn't be a Rolex 24 simulation if we didn't have some older or some slower cars. They're all older cars out here. But as you can see, things can get very tight and very hairy. And I hear there's a little bit of a prediction of some rain. So that should make this a very wild and unpredictable Daytona 24 hours. I was going to call it the Rolex 24, but it really wasn't the Rolex 24 at this point. At one point it was called the Pepsi 24 hour challenge, but I think that was in the 80s, not the 70s. I think this was just the Daytona 24 hours. So without any further ado, let's go racing. So we're ready to go here for 24 hours in 1971, driving for Penske in car number six. Not much has changed between this and the modern race now that come to think about it. But we're underway and racing into turn one. Ooh, as some of the 917s are getting into each other, that's the uh, two Martini International cars. Ooh, and we're going to sneak around the outside of the 17 917, appropriate number there. And try to battle with the Martini International car. Can't quite get around him as we head out onto the road course back straight away. A little bit of a granny shift as I head up through the gears into the kink. Obviously not easy, flat. It's a little bit timid about hitting the, uh, the Martini car there, so I was really arms and elbows there. Got to make hay while the sun shines. The AI are on 120, which I find is usually the best to run them at when you have a changing condition race with the old cars. In real life, the uh, the Golf John Wire Porsches won the race. They're not here. The Martini International cars, of course, were here, but they didn't finish the race. They would end up winning Le Mans in June, but uh, we don't have to worry about Le Mans for a little while. As we go through the not historically accurate part of the course, believe it or not, there was no chicane on the backstretch in 1971. The cars flew down through NASCAR three and four flat out, essentially running an entire oval lap each lap, as well as that inner loop part that would make it classified as a road course. Unbelievable. So we'd be coming through a heck of a lot here a lot, heck of a lot faster. We were running on the 1971 version of this track go through turn one and if my eyes didn't deceive me I thought I saw a little bit of uh, droplets on the windshield oh yeah I'm seeing a lot now as we head out of the horseshoe getting hounded by the Porsche 917 behind me as I slid it through the the kink there on the back stretch that is very much a corner in these cars and now we've got to turn on the wiper because woo -hoo -hoo, little little early on the d clutch there and it broke the back end loose here comes the porsche 917 the blue one the aptly numbered 17 porsche 917 as we're going to go side by side through NASCAR too. Ooh, a little bit close, a little bit close. We're going to get to pick up the draft there. Ooh, 
that was an outbreaking maneuver of all outbreaking maneuvers, but somehow I managed to pull it off. Now, I should say, despite you seeing this rain, that doesn't mean I'm gonna have to pit. These, uh, these older cars, these older prototypes, their uh, tires are good in the wet and the dry. So we're just going to plow on through it. But it certainly means that the... Uh, when the track gets a little more wet, does mean we're going to have to change our driving style. As you can see, I went into turn one in second gear there. Wasn't the best idea. Kind of went out a little wide. Went all the way down into first there, and that wasn't the best idea. So it seems like my first gear is a little too low to be usable. Ooh, granny shift. Big time granny shift. Ooh, big slide through there. It's definitely getting wet now. So we'll utilize first gear to slide it out of the second horseshoe. Woohoo! It's kind of the only place I can use first gear feel confident about using first gear. Look how much sliding is going on through the wheel there. As we're going to try to chase down these Martini International cars. But right now it seems like they've got pretty good pace. Got to be careful coming down the back stretch of the oval now. Ooh, as you can hear, I heard a little bit of water lock up from the tires. All right, we're holding on to it right now as I danced it out of the chicane. It's definitely a, a, a very clenching corner, that chicane. You can take it very, very quickly, as you can with most racing cars, come to think of it. But uh, in these cars, man, it is a otherworldly experience. Get all the way down to the second gear. Probably could grab the first here. Oh. <laughs> Feels like Pedro Rodriguez, if you've ever seen that fantastic footage of uh, the 917 Gulf Porsches at Brands Hatch, where they're literally sideways the entire lap. Kind of feels a little bit like that, but right now the car really didn't like the exit of the horseshoe there. I almost got past. Driving a little bit timid right now. Ooh, as you can see, that, that would be why. And now I've got a big old group, a big truly trained behind me. Oh, that's understeer. That's gonna allow the 917 through for now. I've got another Porsche trying to get by. We're going to try to not let that happen. Look at the spray. Oh, he's going to push up just a little bit. Oop, we're going to get into him just a little bit. Okay, bump drafting at Daytona. And that's going to be straight on. Oh, somehow I managed to not get hit. Coming back across the track, we're going to use the old chicane, the 90s version. Got to find the track in the fog here. All right, back up onto the banking. Well, that's going to put us last in class at the moment as one of the other Ferrari 512Ms comes by, but we'll get around him easily. Look how dark it's gotten here on the circuit. Holy smoke. Nice and easy, Mr. Land. Oh, boy. Oh, the car hooked up there, and we're going off across the grass again. Boy, I wish there was wet rain tires available to me, because right now, the car's really struggling with these conditions, or at least the driver is. can't see a bloody thing. All the way down to 
first gear, just try to hold it together. Car's pretty fast out on the banking. So if we can just hold it together to get out onto the banking, I'll be okay. Okay, so up into third, up into fourth. Now let's get going. We're only 10 minutes into this race. So there's plenty of time to make up time. And remember, there's also the lapped cars that we're going to be coming through very shortly. Oh, as I lifted off the gas nice and early there. Oh, it's a skating ring through the chicane. My goodness. My goodness. Okay, so we're going to have to slow way earlier down for that corner than, uh, <laughs> than I was before. Good grief. That was a big slide. Look how foggy it is. Gotta be nice and easy. The brake lights are pretty much the only thing I can see. The brake lights and the headlights of the cars ahead of me, outside of the you know the five feet in front of me that I can see with my own headlights. Never heard that thing in driving school or just uh, in general. Driving with a, an egg underneath your pedal. That's what I'm doing right now. Well, we've just killed every cone in Daytona. <laughs> but we're hanging on to it. <laughs> Whoa, that's a puddle. That's the wall. I keep forgetting every time I come here to Daytona that there's that puddle there on the braking zone. And around I go. So now we're completely last in class. Which is wonderful. <laughs> but thankfully it looks like the rain is letting up just as soon as I got caught out by a puddle. Because of course, that's how it always seems to go. But now we get to be a little bit cautious through the chicane. But I hit a puddle anyway. Oh, we're going to hit another puddle. <laughs> good, good grief. These puddles are extremely hard to see, and you don't really know when they're coming. Woo! This is the uh, slide video. This is the, this is the drifting video at Daytona. Okay, let's see if we can refocus here a little bit. Lost 25 seconds on that lap. After more or less being able to hang on to everything. But now we're kind of struggling again on the struggle bus. A lot of push in the rain. Now I can see all my competitors, their headlights on the banking and in the horseshoe ahead of me. Well, that was better than I came through there the last time, but still wasn't the ideal line through the corner. Whoa, so we're up over the curb, on the grass just a little bit. And I forgot about the puddle again. <laughs> oh my god. So it appears like the rain has stopped, and indeed it has, but we still got a bit of a wet track. Now I've somehow got to make up 35 seconds that I've managed to lose. over the course of these shenanigans that have been taking place. On the throttle just trying to get the power down. 
which I was able to do that time anyway. So what's it going to be like when some of the leaders start to come through the lap traffic? That's going to be a very interesting part of this race because, uh, not to spoil anything, but in practice, the AI kind of had a hard time making it through the lap traffic without causing incidents or accidents as I hit a cone there that had been placed out in the middle of the track by somebody. Oh, let's see. Went into first gear there. Probably wasn't the best idea at that particular juncture. Because the car kicks sideways an awful lot. I'm going to go down through here, try not to kill a cone. Which I didn't. Woo, right over the curb again. Still hitting the puddle. David, you've got to remember at some point. The problem is I'm going to remember that that puddle is there right at the end of the race. And then it'll be evaporated by that point. So it looks like the leaders are coming through the traffic because as you can see on our little HUD monitor there, Michael Kingsfield, the overall leader of the race, is hanging on to the lead and passing lap traffic is <laughs> my car continues to struggle with the puddles Whew. some flinch your pants moments for sure in the wet weather David. Either I'm not very good at Daytona in the wet, which is certainly possible, or uh, or they've definitely patched the uh, the wet weather driving of the AI. There was a time where you would turn on the uh, the wet weather, and you would definitely expect that the uh, AI would lose lap time hand over fist. But that doesn't seem to be what has happened today. They certainly seem like they're doing all right. So we're coming up behind some of the vintage GT cars according to the HUD, anyway. Definitely took a big risk through there. Car was all over the place. But we're all right. We should start to see our friends, the vintage GT cars, unless they come into the pits. I do remember that some of the vintage GT cars have an option for rain and slick tires which makes it a little bit more difficult on them when you have a wet weather scenario because they have to make a choice whether to stick with what they know or stick with what they're running or switch on to a theoretically faster tire. Car's starting to feel a heck of a lot better now that the uh, the wet weather has kind of subsided.
I'll at least be able to show you going through some GT cars, hopefully. And I saw some headlights going into turn one, so I assume... That those are some of the leading Porsche 917s. Obviously a pretty short lap here at Daytona. So, if you start to make mistakes, naturally, uh, you're going to get caught up pretty quickly. Through the wet water, through the wet water, and into the hard wall. Good commentary there, David. <laughs> Uh, well, it looks like the sun's coming out. That's about the only good thing about this race so far. Or maybe you disagree with me. If you're being entertained, that's all that really matters in the end of the day, isn't it? Look way off the end of the road there. Well, it certainly looks like uh, we're going to continue the legacy of this car at Daytona. Because it doesn't look like we're going to do a heck of a lot better than old Mark Donahue and David Hobbs were able to do in period. Whoop. Well, that was trying to take too big of a risk. Lock it down. See some cones flying. <laughs> It's amazing that how difficult that horseshoe is in a car like this. Five minutes remaining. And at least now that the sun has come up, I can finally see the puddles and where I shouldn't be running. And now the sun really peeking through those clouds. Hopefully it'll warm this track up and evaporate some of this water. That sure would be nice. Oh, I guess not. Get into gear. <laughs> we almost ran the full old track there. Oh dear. Good show, David. This car would be so muddy if I had just done that in real life. It would have looked like I went through the swamp. But we are coming up behind some GT cars. At least one of them, Nick Clayton, who I think is driving the Datsun which seems to be very outmatched on this type of a track compared to the American muscle cars which have shown up to fill out the rest of the uh, starting positions in the GT class. It's going to run way wide and that has not helped the push condition not helped it one bit so let's not go across the grass this time, one way or the other. Well, we'll hit the curb. The curb is better than grass. And you can see him way out in the, in the wet there. I cannot do that. The AI can run through puddles. The regular Joe Schmoes cannot. Here we come on by the Datsun. He was very respectful. And now we're going to get around Sean Fitzpatrick here and here in just a little bit. Easy for me to say. Down the third gear. Try to find the apexes, but the apexes are filled with puddles. But it's all right. Coming up behind one of the American muscle cars. This might be one of the Mustangs, I want to say. Yep, it's a Mustang. Goodbye, Mustang. But we'll definitely see a lot of lap traffic here in the last couple of laps. All the way down to the second gear. Feel a little bit of push. down in the first 
first gear. Coming up through the gears. Woo, slide it out just a little bit over the grass <laughs> again. First gear. Oh, coming up through the gears. It's starting to feel a lot better now, again, now that the rain is gone. So clearly the old Ferrari, not the best car to run in the rain. Look at the difference in speed there. Toggling a hundred different buttons at once. <laughs> Straight through the puddles, on the throttle. The lap times are starting to come down a little bit, but I'm about to get lapped, as if you can notice. The uh, red names are lapped, or uh, lead lap vehicles, and the blue names are lapped cars. And the white ones, obviously, are the ones on your lap. And obviously, Michael is starting to close down just a little bit here. behind the leaders are. We might have one lap after this one. We'll just have to see how it all shakes out. One thing's for certain. I'm fired from Team Penske, I think. <laughs> Accelerate the Mustang, miss the puddles, drive way too slow into the final corner. Going to get repassed by the Mustang because my car was sliding all over the place. That's fun. <laughs> now it's only six seconds between me and the leader. Wow, I'm going to get lapped in a 25 minute race, or so it seems. All the way down into third gear, chuck it through the chicane. And it's finally starting to dry out through there, finally. So this may be the last lap, it may not be the last lap, judging by how close the leaders are behind me, I'm guessing it is not the last lap because they're still passing cars with reckless abandon. We crossed the line, one lap to go. Woo! Oh no, I hit the wall. Well, I hit the wall in the entrance to turn one. That was a code brown moment if I've ever had one. Okay. <laughs> there are two rules in racing. Don't hit your teammate, don't wreck on the last lap. Don't do granny shifts, but that's what we're doing. We're breaking all the rules in this race. Well, it was competitive for like the first 10 minutes, and then it rained. And now I've had all sorts of issues. <laughs> Down to first gear, find an apex. Drive her off the corner, get her up through the gears. You know how we do. We got the leaders behind me. The cars that I was running a pretty strong third to early on in the race. But this is endurance racing, baby. And you never know what's gonna happen. Unless you create the weather scenario which you clearly weren't prepared for, and you end up uh, looking like a complete Muppet, as the old British seem to say. But regardless, we're coming through NASCAR 3 and 4. 
out onto the tri-oval as we've got the car finishing the race or at least coming into the pits. We're, doesn't matter. The Penske Racing Ferrari finishes the race 20 miles behind. Well, <laughs> like I said, it was competitive early on, but uh, I believe Roger is not going to be too happy with me when we get back to the pits. So it was the hippie martini car that won over the regular silver martini car. Yeah, pretty much the uh, the field started as it, or finished as it started. Unfortunately, I was unable to convert my uh, pretty strong run in third place early on in the race into a third place overall, or maybe even first, depending on how the lap traffic went. Because it did kind of get screwed in traffic. There was no doubt, or uh, not in traffic, but in the weather. No doubt about that. Uh, but there you go, down through the rest of the field, you can see all of the other GT cars as well as some of the GT cars that I didn't get the opportunity to lap. So I hope you enjoyed the 1970s Daytona 24 hours. I know some people are going to complain or already have complained in the comments about the number of AI. I'd love to do 32 AI as well, but you know, you've got to sometimes work within your means and there's some more important things on my plate than buying an Xbox One X at this particular moment. But at some point, that will happen and we'll have lovely, fantastic, huge grids and these races will be even more exciting. But it still looks great, doesn't it? I mean, when you see uh, all those classic cars, the Martini and Sunoco liveried uh, Porsches and Ferraris, that's just fantastic. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more Project Cars 2 and motorsport content. And we'll see you in the next video.